So today we're going to be talking about the top five cheapest aircraft. No matter which way you look at it, aircraft, anything in aviation is very expensive. Both the cost to buy, own, operate is really high. So with that in mind, we'll go through the top five cheapest personal aircraft. The cheapest is the Beelite Ultra Cub. The Beelite Ultra Cub is a very light duty, small plane. It's got a pretty low cruising speed of about 55 knots, which is just pretty bad to be honest. Its fuel capacity is around five to six gallons. So you you aren't really going very fast or really very far anywhere and it's also made all out of aluminium which is really good i'm generally not really a fan of the wooden planes at least planes that have got a steel body or chassis and with the wooden wing spars there's a few different engine options but they've only got between 38 to 50 horsepower which is not very much it does also come in a kit form or a factory built option the b light ultra cup is a bush plane or a stole plane so it's got the high wing design the next plane is the sonex onyx sonex onyx Quite a mouthful it's a very small aircraft that almost looks like a small personal jet in this variation it comes with a propeller and a piston engine if you if you're loaded with cash they do also come with a jet turbine engine which is pretty cool its maximum cruise speed is 135 knots and it's got around 75 to 90 horsepower depending on the engine and how it's configured a really important thing to mention is that it's a single seat only so it's not particularly useful it's not as useful as some of the dual occupant planes with a decent payload as well. The payload on this is, it's hardly worth mentioning. It does have foldable wings, which is really good. So you can put it in a normal garage. Like let's say you live on a bit of land and you have a car garage and you have space yeah, and you have your own little runway or somewhere to take off. So if you're in this many people watching this video, it's really good. Number three is the Hummel H5. It's a pretty cool looking plane, almost post-war era. Its cruise speed is 113 knots. It's got about 30 tons of fuel capacity as well. So you can go a reasonable distance, a couple hours, but to be honest with you in this small plane, it does look very comfortable. So I'd be surprised if you wanted to go much further than two and a half, three hours per stint. It is only a single occupant plane only which is a bit of a negative. Funnily enough, it's only got 85 horsepower, so its fuel burn would be really low. There aren't really many official figures, but I would imagine anywhere from four and a half to six gallons an hour. This one does come in a kit form. There's a few different stages of the kit. There's a basic kit, and then there's a fast build kit. Number three is the Excalibur aircraft. It's a dual seat, high wing, pretty ugly looking aircraft to be honest it's a light sport so if you're in the us you can fly this with no license in australia that's not quite the case its engine is mounted in the middle on the top of the wing so and it's facing backwards so it's actually a pusher style which is pretty interesting <coughs> it's got 10 gallons of fuel capacity and its maximum cruise speed is 78 knots its engine that's specified in the kit has got 90 horsepower so Considering it's not particularly powerful, it's likely a smaller engine and its fuel burn would be quite low. Again, I would imagine five to six gallons per hour, which is very reasonable. But at the same time, because of its low top speed, you aren't really going anywhere quickly. The last aircraft that we're gonna be talking about in today's video is the Quicksilver Sport S2. Now, I know this is slightly controversial because this video is about personal aircraft or the cheapest forms of aircraft. I wouldn't necessarily call this a plane. It looks more like some sort of hang glider that you sit in that, that has an engine attached, but I guess you're still in the air. Its max cruise speed is 59 knots and it holds about six gallons of fuel. Six gallons is pretty small, but at the same time i wouldn't really want to spend too much time in this so six gallons seems plenty to me it's got 65 horsepower so that six gallons is probably going to last you quite a long time one really good thing about this hang glider go-kart engine thing is that it is a dual passenger aircraft so it's somewhat usable yeah i just really don't like the look of it and the fact that it looks very similar to a hang glider it looks like a go-kart that's got a set of wings strapped to it now i'm not discrediting the people that design this i just don't really like the look of it and it doesn't really look particularly safe if i was to choose one of these aircraft that i was that i was going to personally either fly own or buy it would be the first one the bell light ultra cub because it's a stole style plane which i really like and the reason why i really like stole planes is that the wing is massively oversized for such a small aircraft which is why it's able to take off in such a short amount of 
takeoff distance, but also most stole planes have got essentially, you're essentially sitting in a roll cage. So if you were to hit the ground or crash, you'd probably be okay now. There's the difference between being in a plane that's really strong crashing. The plane might be okay, as in you probably can't fly it again, but you'll be okay in terms of not getting crushed. But the impact of your neck or the whiplash can also be something else to think about. But this is a much better starting point than the Quicksilver Sport 2S. Kind of looks like trash as well. So all of these planes, so all of these planes are offered in a kit form and they can all be purchased, purchased for less than 25,000 US. So if you're in a Australia, you'd have to pay import tariffs, GST, as well as there's often a lot of other miscellaneous costs when you're assembling the kit. Some of these kits don't come with the engine, some do, so but it's very hard to find $25,000 brand new kit plane with all the different kits available in varying levels of completion. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe, like this video, and comment below if you have any other ideas that you'd like me to make a video on.